For washing miracles no soap can equal, it's Dreft, America's largest selling brand for silks, nylons, woolens, dishes. And now, Dreft, America's favorite brand for dishes, presents Joyce Jordan, M.D. Have you heard? Well, I must tell you. Women, they drive me crazy. Come in the store and talk, talk, talk about nothing else. It's something to talk about, believe me. What is it? What has the whole town talking? The wonderful new dress for dishes. And why? Because this new dress does dishes far faster, far easier, far better than the best soap you ever used. It's amazingly improved, so don't miss it. If you hate to do dishes... You'll love this new draft. It makes suds galore, actually more suds in the hardest water than any other known product. Yes, sir, ounce for ounce, draft tops them all for suds. And those wonderful draft suds wash dishes cleaner than soap. They shine even without wiping. As for grease, why, the greasiest frying pan comes clean without scouring. In fact, this new draft has such an amazing effect on grease, even the dishwater never looks greasy, never feels greasy. Amazing that suds so efficient can be so mild, isn't it? But this new draft is milder than ever. Why, it practically pampers your hands. The new draft is wonderfully sneeze-free, too. And every package washes one quarter more dishes. I've canvassed the neighborhood, told everyone about it. Hasn't been so much conversation about anything since Miss Amy dyed her hair. I'm frank to say I'll never use soap for dishes again. And you won't either when you try that new, improved draft. If you hate to do dishes, you'll love that new dress. And now, Joyce Jordan, M.D. Joyce Jordan and Brett Martin have had a long talk, during which Joyce told Brett that Dawson Blakely had grown tired of her and was leaving town so that he could get away from her. Brett listened avidly, and when Joyce had left her alone with the nurse, she reached for the phone. Nurse, push the phone over a little, will you? Thanks. Operator, will you connect me with Mr. Dawson Blakely? Just hold the line, please. Thank you. Should my heart be going pitter-pat, nurse? Here you are, Miss Martin. Thanks. Dawson Blakely speaking. Oh, Mr. Blakely. You don't know me, but I'm a neighbor of yours. My name's Brett Martin. Oh, I know you by reputation, Miss Martin. <laughs> now, I wonder, is that a compliment? I wouldn't say so, under the circumstances. I admire frankness more than any other quality in either a man or a woman. Joyce Jordan was in here a while ago, Mr. Blakely. Yes? She was singing your praises. Yes? And after she left the room, my nurse... Oh, Miss Martin, don't. ...said we were on the same floor. Yes, I knew we were on the same floor. You've heard, of course, about my operation. Dr. Jordan told me that she'd operated on you. I'm on the quick recovery list at the moment. But even so, I'm flat on my back and bored to death. Oh, well, then, we have one thing in common. But you can get about in a wheelchair, can't you? I've made a few excursions down the corridor to the solarium in a wheelchair. I wish you'd get into your wheelchair, Mr. Blakely, and drop in for a few moments. I'd like to meet you. Well... I can't offer you anything but conversation. Huh? <laughs> well, what can I lose? Okay, Miss Martin, be seeing you in about... Five minutes? Uh, five minutes. Goodbye, Miss Martin. Well, that's done. Miss, I want you to help me look as pretty as possible. Hand me my makeup box, will you? Surely. Right to you. Here you are, Miss Martin. Hmm. I think I'll use a touch of eyeshadow. You don't need it, but I suggest a bit of rouge. Oh, dear, no. I want to be interestingly pale. But I'll use the reddest red lipstick. <laughs> You're all out for them, aren't you? And that remains to be seen. I'd like that lacy bed jacket, the one made of soft wool. Oh, yes, I know what you mean. Just a minute. Oh. 
see you on, Miss Martin. Here, let, let me help you on with it. It's not easy lying in bed. Thanks it's ever so head. much. Shoulder, that's it. Oh. There. My, you do look lovely in it. Oh, that'll be Mr. Blakely now. Well, I'm ready for him. Come in. Lucky I have strong hands. Lucky I can use a one-man model. I'd hate to be pushed like a baby in a pram. How do you do, Miss Martin? Hello. Well, you live up to specifications, Mr. Blakely. The hair is red. <laughs> Hi there, Betty. Hello, Mr. Blakely. You know my nurse? Oh, I know all the pretty nurses. Oh, Mr. Blakely. Mm. Well, that'll take care of you. You may go now, Betty. Well, <clears throat> just um, flash your light if you uh, need me, Miss Martin. Run into my room whenever you get a chance, Betty. I have some more of those chocolates. Oh, I have to think of my figure, Mr. Blakely. Well, I don't have to, but uh, I like to. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And I can see why you're popular with the nurses. Can you? To say nothing of the doctors. You flatter me, Miss Martin. Feeling better? Very much. You, uh, you said that you admired frankness more than any other quality. So I'll be frank. I have it in for you, Miss Martin, and... Well, naturally, you'd carry a grudge against a woman who tried to poison your sweetheart. You tried to poison Dr. Jordan in more ways than one. First, you tried to ruin her reputation. With a bit of assistance from your dear mother, Mr. Blakely. I'm not denying that. But you asked for the assistance. How is your dear mother? Oh, you and my dear mother make quite a team, Miss Martin. Yes. If we set out to, we can do considerable damage. She's an ally to count on when there's offensive warfare in the offing. Offensive is the correct word. I didn't mean it practically that way. I had a note from your mother this morning. She said she'd drop around to see me some afternoon. Nice of her. Maybe you and she could call on me together. Maybe. Look here, Miss Martin. What's going to happen to you when you leave the hospital? You mean, am I going to be arrested for my past misdeeds? <laughs> no, I don't think so. You should be, you know. I agree with you. But I'm fortunate in choosing victims who have a gift for forgiving and forgetting. If I were Joyce Jordan, I'd prosecute you to the limit. But you're not Joyce Jordan. You're a very annoying young woman, Miss Martin. <laughs> Richard Bergman said practically the same thing a short while ago. He has more sense than I gave him credit for. You've defeated all your own purposes, you know. Since you're about to go scot-free, what are you planning to do with your life? What are you going to do with the life Joyce Jordan gave back to you? That remains to be seen, Mr. Blakely. Huh. You mean you haven't made up your mind yet? Oh, no, I don't mean that. I've made up my mind. But you prefer not to take people into your confidence. That's it, huh? Why should I take a man who's a complete stranger into my confidence. Well, you've got me there. Why should you? If you ask me about the immediate future, I might break down and tell you that uh, I'm going to stay with Joyce Jordan for a while in her apartment. You're an amazing woman. You're fragile, pretty. You'd awaken lots of sympathy in a man's heart if he didn't know what... <laughs> You were going to say if he didn't appreciate my capability. Yes, I was going to say just that. To, to see you lying there... Well, you look like a child who's been badly frightened. You're so small. Your eyes are so big. But you have an infernal machine ticking away in back of those eyes. Due to George Jordan, yes. What do you mean? due to Joyce Jordan. She gave me back my brain, didn't she? I hope it proves to be a worthwhile gift. Mr. Blakely, I invited you here this afternoon because I was curious about you. I'd heard so much about you, especially from your mother. Her viewpoint would be rather prejudiced in my favor. Oh, that's that nurse of mine. Come in. Brett, I just stopped by to tell you that... Why... Dawson, what are you doing here? I'm uh, 
making a social call. Oh, I see. Don't look so bewildered, Joyce. I phoned Mr. Blakely's room and asked him to stop in. When you spoke of him recently, you aroused my curiosity. Yes, I rather thought I did. It's wonderful to see you sitting up in that wheelchair, Dawson. Yes, it gives me a sense of power to be able to roll myself around. It must, Dawson. Well, you're looking very lovely, Brett. That pink jacket is quite becoming. Mr. Blakely says I look like a child who's been badly frightened. Mm -hmm. Which shows how deceptive appearances can be. You're not exactly the cavalier type, Mr. Blakely. You shouldn't let me down in front of another woman. You said you had something to tell me, Joyce. Well, yes, I did. Dr. Tracy feels that we can take off almost all of your bandage tomorrow. You'll only wear a tiny patch on Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving? Yes, it's Thursday. It's usually the last Thursday in the month. <laughs> I keep forgetting your English, Brett. Thanksgiving's our most typically American holiday. Oh, yes, I know about Thanksgiving. It just slipped my mind for a minute. It was founded by the early settlers of your New England state. That's right. It was a feast of harvest, as I remember. The settlers went all out to be big-hearted and hospitable. They invited in friends and enemies alike to share their harvest. You have it down pat, Miss Martin. <laughs> yes, she has. Oh, one of the things that's making me very unhappy right now is the fact that I can't have my friends in my home for Thanksgiving. All of my friends, I mean. I'll have a few, of course. Dr. Tracy, I suppose, and Dr. Gray, and Mike, and Jimmy Malone, and Doria. And Doria has to go upstate to be with her family. But Dr. Tracy, and Dr. Gray, and Mike, and Jimmy will be with us. Oh, it breaks my heart that you and Brett won't be out of the hospital for Thanksgiving, Dawson. Well, it doesn't break my heart. I'm very fond of hospital food, especially on Thanksgiving. I won't in the least mind eating alone. Oh, I see. As a matter of fact, Mr. Blakely, you won't have to eat alone. I'll be here too, you know. Hmm, might be a delightful idea if you and your mother ate Thanksgiving dinner with me in my room. You don't have to say yes or no this minute, Mr. Blakely. You can take time to think it over. already America's favorite for dishwashing is now better than ever. Draft? Right. It's a new draft, an improved draft. A draft designed to do dishes quicker, easier, better than soap ever could. If you hate to do dishes, you'll love this new draft. Why, what is it that gives more suds than any other known product? Draft? Right. In the hardest water, the new improved draft makes more suds, ounce for ounce, than any other dishwashing product known. And what is it that washes dishes cleaner, gets rid of grease better than the best soap you can buy? Draft? Right. Draft washes dishes so clean they shine even without wiping, cuts grease without a bit of scouring. And what is it that's wonderfully sneeze-free? What is it that washes more dishes with every package? Draft? Right. In fact, every package of new, improved draft washes one quarter more dishes. Better try it. The new, improved draft. If you hate to do dishes... You'll love that new draft. Draft? Right. Now, this is Richard Stark inviting you to listen again to Joyce Jordan, M.D., Brought to you by Procter & Gamble, makers of Draft, America's favorite brand for dishes. It's new, it's improved, it's better than ever. Draft. 
This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.